In this video, we look at how we can set up internationalization of an Angular 5 app that is compiled using ahead of time compilation. So, on screen, we're starting off in a very simple Angular app, looking at the app components markup file. As you can see, you have a few paragraph tags in here. Each of these paragraphs we're going to mark for translation by using the Angular i18n attribute. The first time we're using the attribute, we're just using it by itself within our opening paragraph tag, but you'll notice in the second and third times, when we mark a field for translation, we can pass along extra information like a description and or a meaning that hopefully can give our translator some clues or context when they work to translate our file. In our second paragraph here on line three, if we set i18n equal to a single string, that's going to be a description that the translator can see. And on line five here, if we set it to a string where we're using a pipe symbol to separate two bits of text, then one of those is going to be treated as a description and the other is going to be treated as some sort of meaning. Again, all of this so that when you do pass off your eventual translation file to a translator, they may find that the metadata you provide makes the translation more simple for them. So now, once we've gone through our markup and we've made sure that everything that needs to be translated is marked for translation, what we can do is create a translation source file. We're actually going to do that by using Angular CLI. So in the terminal here, I'm going to type ngxi18n. By default, this command is going to go through our app, find all of our bits marked for translation, and create a file for us, messages.xlf. If I were to quickly open up messages.xlf, what this represents is a file that I would normally pass off to a translator. They would take it, open it in some app that can handle these kind of files, where they would then see each of the elements that I marked for translation, along with any meanings or descriptions that I provided, and then be able to provide translations to those before returning back a similar file to me, complete with translations. So now, in our example, because this file, as you can see, is XML based and it's simple enough, we're just going to inspect it right within our editor. And you'll notice that for every single element in our markup that we marked for translation, just three in this case, over in our messages.xlf file, for each one of those, we get a trans unit element. If I were to quickly expand those out, you can see that each of them actually contains a source element that has the English or the original text, the text that we intend to translate. Also, for my second two trans units, you can see my description and also my meaning being provided. Now, as I said, you would hand this over to a translator and they would not work directly with XML the way we're going to, but because this is simple, we're just going to provide our translation right here. In this demo, we want to look at translating this file so that the French users of our app can enjoy it as well. To do so, I'm not going to edit my messages.xlf directly. Rather, in my app, I'm going to create a locale folder and I'm going to create a copy of messages.xlf that I'm going to name messages.fr.xlf, where obviously the fr indicates our locale, French in this case. I already have this file in place, so I'll quickly open it. And what I'll point out is that this is the exact same file that we just took a look at in terms of content. The only thing different here is that for every one of the source elements in our trans units, we've gone ahead and added a corresponding target element that contains the French translation. So, hi, salute for the first paragraph, for the second paragraph we're using bonjour, and so on and so forth. So now, imagine that we're at the point where we have our translations file, it's been returned to us from the translator, and we're looking at it on screen. We can merge these translations into our app using ahead of time compilation, which really means we're going to create an app package specific to the French locale ahead of time and then deliver it when it's needed. Now, because this app has been built with Angular CLI, if we attempted to serve it up right now using something like ng-serve or ng-build as is, what we would get would be a version of the app that uses the default locale, which in this case is going to be English US. We want to avoid that. We want to use the French version of the application. So instead of using ng-serve or ng-build directly, we're also going to provide some extra options here. The AOT flag is obviously going to indicate that we're compiling here using ahead of time compilation, followed by us using the i18n file parameter, which is going to allow us to point to our translation file. 
you'll see that's in the source locale folder and as you can expect the name is messages.fr.xlf. The next parameter you can see it's using is i18n format and we're setting that to xlf to indicate the type of translation file and finally we're using the locale parameter to indicate the locale of this app which is going to be fr for french. If I serve up the app with these particular options, once it's loaded up, if you go over to our browser and take a look at our running application, as you can see, now we're getting the French version of this application as expected.